Hello and welcome to Scrapping on the Fly. My name is Kristen and I am here with 30 Days of Sketches with Christy's Beautiful Life. And today is day number five. And this is our sketch. It is beautiful with all these gorgeous florals, um, some inking and um, some cut paper with like the pattern in the background and a single picture and this sketch was created and brought to us by Amy Cattenbelt Spoonful of Scraps. So while this sketch has lots of lovely florals I am going in a little bit different of a direction and using this outer space type paper and this paper is from Cherry Art. Um, I believe I got this in like a Facebook marketplace purchase. And there are two different um, sets. One of them is Arcade, that's the scrap, and, the, uh, and it's Retro Realm. And the other one that right there with the blue and all the stars is Cosmic Energy. And so I'm trying to decide exactly what I want to do. I wasn't sure if those star papers from one collection would go with this one because it's more of a gray back to, um, background and the other one is that bright blue and yellow. The yellows do match um, and there is a dark blue in the um, that scrap of paper. And there's some light blue in the other one, but there's also a dark blue black color in the star paper as well. So that right there is the picture has like multiple layers and some of them are like wonky. So I'm thinking I'm going to use some of this paper or scraps from this paper to create that uh, frame for my one picture because I do have one picture just like in the sketch. And I also have this one piece of solid um, cardstock, white cardstock, and Dottie About Flares prompt for today's sketch is to use a white background. And so I don't have a problem with that. There's going to be some inking on there, so it won't be like a stark white. And then these are the embellishments and things that I pulled that I wanted to try and use. This one right here is Simple Stories Bro & Co. And I'm pretty sure that's the one that I want to use because it's got a very similar pattern to one of those pages. And then this is the Paper House Clear Cuts and it's adventure and travel. And the picture is definitely um, something along those lines. <laughs> Um, and so I thought if I could use some of those up, that'd be great. Um, this right here is a Paper Studios collection, and I did not end up using that. That mint was a little too minty. And then this one is an American Crafts Explorer, and I also don't use that. So here's my picture, and it is my son during homeschooling. He was doing a VR thing with his phone and these VR goggles, and he was on the moon and different planets. He went to some museums, and um, it was very interesting. And then I pulled these two Ranger inks. One is Wild Honey, and the other one is a Shimmer Spray Black Marble. And that uh, Wild Honey is like a yellowy orange which is kind of fitting for the color that is on this paper and here's my dotty about flare that I promise is going on this layout in this video and um, I'm setting it right close by so I don't forget even though I did that the other day and still forgot but I really am gonna try um, and I promise it gets on there in this video and so here is all of my papers. I'm hoping to get some of this used up. These papers are from 2007. So I've got some papers, some embellishments, and my picture and a sketch. So let's see how this goes. So first I determined that I am gonna use that Cosmic Energy No Radar paper. And I'm gonna use that as the background. So I want this, obviously I want my background paper where I'm going to do all of my work on this white, like in, uh, for the prompt. So I cut that down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And then I trim 
the branding strip off of this Arcade Retro Realm paper and I just even it out and it's about seven, maybe eight inches wide, um, wider than what is in the sketch. And then I decide I'm just going to cut it four inches, three inches, two inches, one inch and a half an inch and see, um, I feel like that's going to work for me. I was not, however, taking into account that I have a big splotch of um, ink going on the bottom and the top, and I don't want to cover all that up with these papers because in the sketch they're not really covered at all. So um, that's okay. This is why I call it scrapping on the fly, you all. So I did have let you watch me cut all of that, um, and then I am going to cut the branding strip off of this, and then I'm going to cut a chunk out of the middle, not a full, even even, um, even piece, just enough to where I know I can mat my picture with one of the wonky mats. I trim my picture down to four by four, and then I am going to set everything aside except for my white paper so that I can do the inking on it and, um, so that can dry a little bit while I work on matting my picture. So if I'm not spraying, I will just put a, some packaging from underneath um, an old um, paper pad underneath my work so I don't get ink on my mat and or not as much ink on my mat, let me rephrase. If I'm spraying, I have a box that will hold my paper, um, but I was just going to do the package technique and smear. So you can use the package technique in multiple ways, and but since I wanted kind of a oval or a partial oval um, on all three of these sides, I figured I'd just smear so I'd have a little bit more um, of a solid amount there. So I get all those down and then I get the um, black marble delusions and tap that out on all three of these um, little splatter or um, these little smush bits that I just made and I am still following the sketch pretty closely um, theirs are more like ovals like a partial oval on theirs but they do have splatters around as well so I did that and then I clean up my space just from the few random splatters and I heat you my heat tool out and uh, dry my paper for the most part. I don't want to dry it so much that it folds up too much, but I dried it a little and set it aside while I work on matting. So I did use the rest of this scrap right here to mat my picture, even though it's not big enough. So first I put it on this black matte paper and um, trim it down. And now look here, guys. Uh, this is my biggest tip for you. The date is there on the back of my picture. I wrote it down right there on my um, sketch so that I have it. Um, I usually will write it on a post-it note or something like that so I have it for when I go to make the documentation which I don't do during this video but will and now I have it written down the date although I've written it somewhere else. I try and stay in that habit because it is the worst to get all that stuff down and go oh shoot when did this happen? So that's my big tip for you today. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, I use up the rest of this little piece right here and I kind of Frankenstein a mat um, so that it shows on both sides kind of wonky. And um, I just use my Scotch tape runner to get that down. And then I cut a five by five piece of that background paper, the very back um, and mat it wonky again on there. And I just set that aside and bring my uh, paper back. And now I want to ink up the edges because there are places where this is going to lay on that blue star paper that are white from where the stars are. And I want it to stand out. So I ink the entire thing with some black soot distress. Um, it's just the distress ink, not the distress oxide, which I use sometimes too. And so I ink that up so it's much more visible. And then I get started layering these pieces. Now, like I said, the first one I cut was four inches, then I did three, two, one, and a half. And that did not work for me because it's gonna cover way too much uh, space. So then I try and move it around a little bit and it's still gonna take up way too much um, space because that right there is the three, two, one, and a half. 
So that's, I mean, hold, putting a four at the bottom is definitely not going to work. So I maneuver a little. I don't want the um, continuity to disappear because that was something that was so cool with that floral pattern paper is that it was like just separated and the design continued even through the breaks or, you know, at, between the breaks. So I, that was where the problem lies now is trying to figure out how to fix this. So you can tell if you're looking <laughs> that the two middle pieces, um, one that's upside down right now and the one above it match, but they don't match <laughs> the other three. Now, would you notice if you were not paying close attention? Maybe not, uh, because it's not a super busy pattern like that floral um, I get my T-ruler out and I make sure that it is pretty darn close. And I am pretty impressed with myself because, one, I don't use rulers very often. And, two, I actually think that this is about as close to straight as it is as ever is going to get for me. So I just stagger them. In the sketch, there's a bigger space between the bottom and the next one up. And then a little bit smaller and then a little bit smaller. So I kind of did that. Um, not like measured or anything. I mean, you know, I have said it plenty of times <laughs> that I don't call it scrapping on the fly for nothing. <laughs> so I get my matted picture and I decide that I'm going to put this a little lower than in the sketch. In the sketch, it is between the um, second one from the bottom and the third one from the bottom. And I decide that I am going to put it up between the Pretty much most of them because the matting is so wide. Now, look, I got my Dottie Bat Flare out immediately. I put some fun foam from Walmart in there because that is the perfect um, depth so that it is flat on the page and not um, lumpy or sticking out anymore. It's three-dimensional enough. It doesn't need any extra help. And so I put that on there and lay it down where, I'm gonna, where I think I'm going to keep it immediately. I have, I bought my first round of Dottie About Flare in December and I only had a little cause I wasn't sure, you know, what I was going to do with it and it's coming from another country and so I thought I would just uh, play it safe and get a little and so I just got a bigger shipment in in January so I'm not 100% used to using them. I love them but I don't always remember I have them. So they are now sitting on my desk and I've picked a few out for the next few layouts so that I don't forget because I love them. They add such a neat um, thing, a uh, neat uh, point or dimension uh, to the page. So this one, like I showed earlier, is like a, a sky. It's like black with white um, little speckles like the star, or the galaxy, because that's one of the things my son was doing. So I just use the fun foam, which is sticky on one side and not on the other. And I use my Nouveau Deluxe to glue that down. And then I got these stars off of the Simple Stories Bro & Co. foam stickers. And I pulled all of them that were going to work for me. There was another one on there that was like brown and some that are like black. Um, and that, not, not solid black. They're like black plaid or something and that wasn't going to work so I pulled the other ones off and I just put them around in a general area of where I was going to keep them and I used my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive to glue those down and then from that paper house um, adventure paint stickers which are clear I went ahead and straight adhered the one over on the bottom right corner says journey and it's an arrow and I've just stuck that straight to the page which was fine but the other ones I wanted to mat, so I matted it on the back of the same paper I used for the middle part. And the back is like this um, green color that matches some of that paper. So I thought that would help bring that in. So I take that star off right there, and it says Escape 2. Um, and I decided to cover the 2 up because I wasn't really escaping 2, or he wasn't escaping. But... Um, two anywhere in particular and I wasn't putting anything next to that and so I just covered the two up with that star and then this other one says destination anywhere which is totally true because when you're using a VR uh, you can pretty much go anywhere it's pretty cool so I hold this up because I want I don't mind that part of the word destination is 
underneath that mat, but I wanted it to be uh, you know, something you could actually read, so I had to hold it up so I could see over it, or you'd see the back of my blue head. Yes, I said blue. My hair is blue. Well, it's really more green now because it's fading. One of those crazy whims. Uh, midlife crisis, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> so I picked my title from the Simple Stories foam stickers as well, and it says Rad. And I just used my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to get that down. And it has an exclamation point at the end, so I get that down as well. And there is a little um, Northern Star uh, symbol that I put at the bottom of the picture mat. So there are the three little clustery bits down there in the bottom right corner. And then I get my Nouveau in Ebony Black out, and these are the crystal uh, drops. I just got these not that long ago, and um, I really love them. And then the other one I got out was White Blizzard, which is a shiny. And so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that um, in person. You can see the shine. And then I think I am done, and then I decide I'm going to pull out my Tim Holtz big chat and just pull a couple of words and I decided to do black because there's black in that star one of the stars there's black um, in the star by the picture and then the, of course the title is black so I use the black words on the white and I just picked destination explore and dreamer and I thought that would be fun and since um, those are very fitting I just get those tacked down and then I'm going to show you the sketch and I'm done. I really love this sketch. I really like how it turned out and that is it. So I hope you all come back again. Please follow all the awesome people below. They will be linked below in the description box and I hope that you will come back and watch some more because I will be here every day this month. So have a great night and I hope you get a chance to do something you love with someone you love. Happy scrapping!